Hello, I'm Blake Scarlevi with Route 16, and I'm back with another quick pro tip video. And this one is also related to Power Automate. Um, so this is regarding an action that I believe is not used enough based on uh, my experience working with clients in Power Automate, and they are typically not aware of this action. Uh, and it is called the Compose action. Um, so I'm going to show you why I like to use it. There's a couple of reasons why. Um, for this demo purpose, I have a Power Automate that just runs on demand. I'm retrieving all accounts, um, and then I'm looping through each one. And then I want to check a condition. Uh, for demo purposes, I just have, you know, is the accounts created, created on greater or equal to, and then I have this expression here where I'm doing current time that the flow runs and then I'm adding days but I'm using negative days so basically um, the current time the flow runs minus 30 so is the account created on more than uh, later than 30 days previously basically um, so let me just run this real quick and show you what it looks like to try to debug this flow or you know, say it ran, but um, it's not working right for whatever reason. So we can come in and look at the run that occurred and see what the values are. Now, in a lot of actions, uh, if you just click into it, it tells you what the result is, right? So in this case, I'm initializing a Boolean. I'm setting it to false. This is telling me the value is false. The problem with conditions like it only tells you the final result. So in this case, you know, I'm comparing is this accounts created on greater than 30 days ago? It's just telling me false. Well, if I believe that it should be true, for example, um, I'm like, well, how do I debug this, right? If I'm writing code, I can easily step through and see the values for everything, or I can write, you know, like little trace logs um, so I can see the result of certain values. Um, and But with Power Automate, we can't see that easily. So that's where the compose function comes in handy here. So I'm going to go ahead and add another action, search for compose. Uh, it's this purple guy here under data operation. So basically what it does is I, I can pass in like any value into here. I can use expressions. Um, you can even like write JSON. Uh, and it'll just uh, output that same exact value that you pass in. So in this case, I want to see, um, maybe I want to see both sides, right? Because I'm not sure what the created on is. I'm not sure what the value of this is. Um, so basically, I can just copy this created on, paste it in here. Let me rename this to uh, like account created on. I'm going to move this around so the compose runs first. Then I'm going to do another compose for the other side. And so I'm just going to take this same exact expression, paste it in here, change the name of this. So this is uh, today minus 30 days. And now let's see what it looks like when we run it again all right so here we go it's looping through each record now so now when it's done we can see each record so i have nine accounts um, this is showing us the first one that's returned. I can click open on this. It's giving me the exact created on that of the account that we passed in here. So in this case, it's April 22nd of last year. And now, same thing. I can see the what's the result of this expression, which was the time that this flow runs minus 30. So in this case, it's March 20th. Um, so obviously, this is 2022, so this is not created on, um, you know, 30 days ago or later. 
So that's why this is returning false. So I can see exactly why, right? So that's the first scenario, basically just writing like little debug, debug messages here and there. Um, a little bit annoying because you gotta add the compose um, and put the values in there, run it and see what it is. Um, you can just leave those compose in there. Um, so when it's in production, you can have, uh, you know, see those values if you're trying to debug it in production, right? Um, as you can see, like it shouldn't, depending on what your compose is, it shouldn't uh, increase the performance. Like this is zero seconds, so it's, you know, taking some like milliseconds to run, right? Um, so it's probably not a huge deal uh, to leave them in there. Just depends on what you're trying to do. Um, but the second scenario that the compose is cool, uh, it's it can be like a variable as well. Um, so with variables, if you haven't used them, you have to initialize them first and they have to be initialized like outside the scope. So you can't initialize a variable in a for each, apply to each loop. You have to do it outside, initialize it, and then when you're in the loop, you can set it. Um, so in this case, you know, I'm starting as false and then if this condition beats, I'm saying it to true. Well, the nice thing about compose is they can basically be used like variables, but you don't have to initialize it. Um, so I can show an example in this case, uh, since we have these written already, instead of writing this same exact expression again, I can just use the compose. So if I come here to the dynamic content, I can see my action today minus 30 days, I can just use the output of that compose and put it in my condition here. Um, so we can run it again. It's going to have the same result, but you'll see that it, you know, works that way, basically. Um, you know, it still has the issue of like, it's not going to tell you exactly what it is, but the value of the compose will tell us what it is. So, um, so yeah, same experience here, but now instead of writing the expression again, I'm just using this value already since I have it there. Um, so I don't have to do it twice basically. Uh, so that's the other reason I like to use it. And um, that's it basically. So I like to do it for debug purposes and then also leveraging um, almost as like variables. Uh, so that's it. Hope you found that um, valuable for you and thanks for watching.